The following program is a public access production. Comcast is required to provide time on this channel and make it available pursuant to franchise agreements with the communities we serve. Comcast is not affiliated with the following program or the producers of public access programming and is not responsible for the content. The following program does not reflect the opinions of Comcast or its affiliates. It's career day on the Sunny Brightly Show as radio host Alicia Fonseca stops by for a visit and tells us what it's like to be an on-air personality. Coming up next on the Sunny Brightly Show. Hello and welcome to the Sunny Brightly Show. I'm your most awesome host, the Sunny Brightly. It's career day on the show, so we have a very special episode in store. Today, reality TV producer and radio personality, Alicia Fonseca is here today to talk to us about her upcoming projects and what she does you know, with her career. So, without any hesitation, here's our good friend of the show and good friend of mine, Alicia Fonseca. Thank you. Nice thank you very much for your invitation. Oh, thank you very much. Whoa, you have one heck of a grip, girl. And what are you, thank like you. three feet tall, too? Kidding. I'm just I'm just kidding. as tall as you are. Which makes me very short. Yes. Um, okay, so so you're here on the show. If you can tell us a little bit about yourself, like, like for example, where are you originally from? Um, well, I was born and raised here in Chicago. Uh, my parents are Mexican. They were, um, they came to the United States, you know, when I was born, pretty much. So oh, 40 years ago. 40, what? Well, 40, wow. Yeah. Uh, darling, you look 22 to me. Yes. Yes, you do. That's, I, mean, I don't, what, you know, I just gave it away, but. Um. I was going to say, I'm like, <laughs> isn't that like a taboo when it comes to women? You don't usually. No, but you know what? I'm proud to say that. Exactly. You know, yeah. And I'll tell you why, because I'm, I'm pretty sure you still get carded. You know, not one gray hair. Okay. You know, and. Thank you. Yeah. You know, that's why. What do you think I told you? I'm like, I'm like, wow, you know, hot 22 year old. <laughs> you know, so Thank I'm like, you. And, you know, and she's proactive and, right. you, know, you know, I got to get her on the show. Right. So, well, so, so you're originally from Little Village, right? Yes, I okay. was born and raised in Chicago. Um, we come from a big family. We bro yeah. uh, brothers. I have about six brothers and two sisters. Um, wow. Yeah, I wouldn't have a large family in my life. Really? Why? Yeah. Why so? Uh, just everybody's different, you know. I mean, I love my brothers and sisters. But it's just too many of us. I never I, got what I wanted. I, you know, it's just like, you know, it's too many of us to please. So, it, you know, my parents had to, you know, work hard for all of us. But they did a good job. Yeah. They, I mean, I remember, I mean, uh, I guess the mentality behind that sometimes is, you know, we have the small family because cause kids are expensive. But I guess, mm -hmm. you know, in the old mentality, especially in Latin America, it's not about, you know, it's not about, ooh, great, I have a kid. It's, ooh, great, I have another worker, I guess. It's all something like that, right? Well, I, I hope that that's not what they were planning. Oh. <laughs> but, um, mm -hmm. you know, my six brothers were born in Mexico, and the three of us were born here. Mm -hmm. um, so they, um, you know, I have brothers that are twins. Wow. You know, identical twins. Wow. Um, and then me and another brother. So okay. just the three of us here. Um, so pretty so when large it, yeah, family. Yeah, so when it comes down to it, you, know, you just hate the, the Now that we're problems. older, you know, it's easier. Yeah, you well, know, it's, I would think, yeah, nice. well, as you get older. But then, but then again, some people just don't grow up. So, you know, sometimes, that no matter, true. yeah, no matter how much you try, you know, but somebody in the family is always going to be right and somebody in the family is always going to be wrong. True. And then, there is no perfect family ever. No, this There's is always, true. There's always some type of So how person. did you get into, into the radio business? Well, I started um, when I was, you know, fresh out of high school. I had gone to Columbia, and it was just at the time not for me. Columbia was just not something for me. So yeah. I just, you know, put that to the side, and you know, I was presented with the opportunity to go back to um, study um, at Illinois Center for Broadcasting, mm -hmm. which I just graduated this past June. And while I was there, I learned from a lot of the instructors that were there. Um, a lot of them, you know, are teaching at the um, Illinois Center for Broadcasting, but they're instructors that are in the field, and you know, I was taught by people that you know are knowledgeable and they know, you know, like yeah. they know this industry very well. So they kind of put me in the right path, and I fell in love with the industry. And um, but my thing was, you know, I started my own radio show, and I wanted to start something different. So 
I started my own radio show in Spanish, which nobody ever took the initiative to do. I was the only one with the Spanish radio show. Oh, is this uh, is, like what kind of radio show? Like, uh, like, like, not like podcast, you know, not like that. No, right? it's a live radio, online radio show at the oh, school. Oh, okay. Oh, it's Spanish. okay. Okay. Oh, and they didn't do it over there. They only had English. English really, radio shows. I, I would yeah. think with the demographic changing, especially in the Chicago area, they would, you know, be willing to cater to that. So they were right. receptive about it. They they were cool about well, it. Well, there was there was Latino students, but a lot of them that you know they didn't want to take the initiative. Just you know, to they wanted to be of, they wanted to play it safe. Yeah, so I just took that step and opened the doors for others to do that. So, you know, you took one for the team. Yeah, and what I did, um, you know, which I'm proud of. Mm -hmm. um, there was a student that reached out to me and said, you know, I want to do what you're doing. Can you teach me? And I helped him and I, you know, I kind of, you know, guided him and taught him how to do what I was doing. And, you know, till this day, he looks for me and, you know, he asks me for advice and, you know, I try to help That's him out in anything part. that I do. That was the best part. So, yeah, so, you know, so you have, yeah. And now that I graduated, um, you know, like I was asked to come back and teach because they're going to open the bilingual program. Um, next uh, month. Now? Yeah. Wait, really? Now? So, yeah. So next month in August. Can I tell you a secret? Yeah. You know, I don't mean to interrupt you, but they actually have like the DMV actually has two languages to a test. And I think that was 10 years ago. So, or maybe 20 years ago. Yeah. So I, if they're just getting this now. I know it's so it's so weird well, that sometimes it just that some people don't see the big picture like that, especially with demographics changing. You know, you know? they did offer that bilingual program years ago, but mm -hmm. I guess no, the numbers were dropping. No takers? Know? People were just not, you know, signing up. I guess they didn't have enough enrollees. So what they did, you know, they stopped offering the program. And, you know, they had asked me if I, you know, if I felt that, you know, it was something that would be beneficial to the Latino community to offer it in Spanish. And I said, of course, because yeah. no other school's offering it, you know. Right. So, you know, they said, okay, we'll go ahead and offer it. So right now I'm working on the marketing side of you know, of the school, like helping them translating, translate the curriculum. Kind of like, um, I want to say like promotions and commercial work kind of something? Right, kind of like promoting the, the curriculum uh -huh. um, so we can get a lot of students to sign up and, and then, you know, eventually be a graduate assistant and helping students teach them what I learned mm -hmm. and kind of coach them. So, I mean, is there them. a specific title? Like, for example, on television, we, you know, we have the producers, directors and you know, uh, te technical directors, and and then all the way down to like the, you know, the sweeper dude. I mean, what I mean, what's what's the hierarchy in uh, in in radio? Uh, it's my position. Yeah, in like radio? for example, yeah, you know, let's use your position. For well, example. I'm doing. I'm a producer. So you're I, producing. I produce your... my own radio show mm -hmm. um, on the station, and our plan and goal is to have eventually, if we have enough, you know, Latino students, mm -hmm. um, is open up the doors to having. A Spanish radio station where it's nothing but, you know, Latino students with a Spanish radio show doing doing their own programming. Yeah, but we would have to fill all, all the slots for oh. Monday through and, and Sunday. Would you show. be in charge? Yes. Okay, well, it's good to know. Yeah. Good to know. You know, don't worry. Before before we are doing or anything like that, we're going to be flashing your uh, your email address and all that fun stuff. So in case people want to, you know, any questions, you know, they might have towards you or or any just any idea. I mean, or even advice that you yeah. might want to give an, a startup, um, you know, radio personality. Uh, I mean, I mean, at this day, at this day and age, I mean, I remember when I was growing up, when Sunny Brightly was growing up, uh, there was only an AM station that did Spanish mm -hmm. and half of it was just, you know, re rehashed radio dramas. And believe it or not, you know, radio dramas, it, they may have gone out like in the 40s and 50s with the birth of television. Yeah. They may have gone out in, in the English speaking world, but in Latin America, we still had radio dramas. I remember them, I remember them growing up. So, and, and it was all just one little station, one little AM station. And now yeah. we have, I can, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of them out there, right. you know, and that's why it's hard to believe that, you know, that some of these institutions, not necessarily just, you know, where you came from, but there's a lot, and I'm pretty sure there's a lot of them still out there that haven't even adopted that kind of uh, right. idea. And, and the thing is that, you know, a lot of people don't understand that, you know, you, you can go 
like a lot of people that go to the school, like they think that you know going to you know becoming a on air personality is easy. That you know oh, nowadays, no. nowadays uh -huh. you know you can have your own radio station online. Well, yeah, well, yeah, you it's just, not as easy yeah. as you may think. Of course, you know people it's, think it's easy, but it's not. It's right up there with somebody just buying a GoPro and saying, "Yeah, you're right. a film producer." <laughs> no, there's, there's so many aspects and so many things that you need to learn. Right, and you know if you learn it the right way, I mean, there's so many avenues you can take. Um, you don't necessarily have to just be behind a microphone. You can be a voiceover talent. You can be, mm -hmm. um, you can be, you know, like a um, producer. You can be uh, anything else. You know, like um, you. Can, I mean, the opportunities are just endless. And people, if you don't study, you know, you don't learn it the right way. You're never going to know the opportunities that are available. This is People true. are just going to sit behind a microphone and talk, and that's not the whole point about exactly. Being there has to be a, a a point, and of course, there's got to be an intro and the subject, and then an exit. Right. You know, you just can't go up there and talk. I mean, you'll bore people to death. Right. Yeah. I I know. I get you. I get you. So, on you know, that's why, like myself, I know that you know, radio is not what I'm going to stick to. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm going to do radio you, as well. That's right. That's right. So, yeah. let, you know, I don't mean to like, or stop on your toes, but I know that you're also getting into reality TV. Yes. All right? Yes. All right. Go, tell me a little bit about that. Doing radio. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I met this awesome that'll, guy. That'll, that, that'll be your day job, right? right exactly. <laughs> yeah. I met this awesome guy who's right now, he's a student. He'll be graduating in November, but mm -hmm. him and I um, have partnered up right now. He's still a student, so I really can't really work with him yet. Mm -hmm. Um, but we are go going to kind of work together. What do you together. mean you can't work with him yet? Um, he really doesn't have the time. Oh, I thought that, I, I don't know. For some he's reason, he's still can, a student. Right. So for, technically, he doesn't have the time to dedicate. You know. Right. You to, want you want someone there one hundred percent. Right. Yeah. For some reason, I kept thinking there was another contract there that you can't work on this unless you're. I don't know. No. I'm, no. I'm not, just, not in that sense. Somewhere else. Yeah. Um, but anyways, he does. Um, he knows a lot of production and, you know, like recording mm -hmm. and things like that. So, yeah. you know, we're going to be shooting um, a reality series coming up. Um, you wouldn't have to have a name for I mean, do you have uh, a, like... A, we don't have the name for the, the series, but we okay. do have ideas on, on the type of realities that we're going to be filming. Mm -hmm. um, the one that we're going to be doing, which is one of many, right. um, is going to be about the homeless. Um, we're going to okay. do some about, you know, why people get to where they are, you know, what happens in their lives that gets them to that point in their life. Oh, um, oh, like something like, like, uh, like cause and effect, something like that, like something that might lead up to Right. And I mean, it, because it is amazing that sometimes things happen for a reason, right? Right. That's what I'm trying to say. And, and the reason why, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm talking about this is because at one point in my life, I had run into a homeless guy that, you know, he was like, you know, very kind of in bad shape oh. and we found out that he was a lawyer before he was very wealthy wow. he lost his parents his home he lost everything when his parents passed away so you know that brought him down and he went into like major depression and and yeah. that's where he lost everything so you know a lot of the times like these people like they have really good stories behind them that you know sometimes maybe they don't have that you know motivation or, or maybe they don't have access to people that they can maybe go like out and outlet. talk to. Right. Uh, so that's one of the um, ideas that we have going idea. on. Mm -hmm. Another one is um, talking about, you know, right now reality TV has kind of changed in a, in a sense that, mm -hmm. you know, people are talking more about, you know, like reality, what's happening to our bodies, like health wise, for instance, you know, myself, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what happened briefly. Okay. Uh, last month I was diagnosed with carotid dissection. I know that you probably don't know what that means. And don't worry. I'm pretty sure <laughs> we're going to be putting up a graphic in a few minutes. And, uh, but go ahead. Describe yes. it. Well, so what happened? So pretty much I ended up in the emergency room and, and I was admitted to the hospital. Um, mm -hmm. What happens is I didn't know that I had a vein that goes into, you know, from your um, neck into your, to your, uh, the tip of your skull pretty right. much. And I had an aneurysm that was like forming that was ripping and my doctor told me that you know it was tearing already so i would have had a stroke and you know things like that are like people are not aware of you know that can happen to you it can happen to yeah, me it can happen to anybody and women are at high risk for it for for a carotid dissection women that are between the ages of 30 and 50. so 
you know, a lot of the times if you go for a CAT scan, they're mm -hmm. never going to find it unless you do an MRI with wow. the dye. Wow. So it was pretty scary because my doctor told me that they weren't even looking for that. Mm. They were looking for something else in my brain to make sure there's no swelling. There was no, you know, like fluid in my brain. Yeah, it's, you know. And they found that by accident. So, you know. Things happen for a reason. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's one, one of the, you know, the reality series that we want to do is about, you know, different, you know, like things that happen to people, like, you know, in, in the health industry, um, you see it on TV. I'm not sure if you watch TV, reality TV. Yeah, from time but to time. You've it's seen, the one on Sunny Brightly's guilty of the pleasure. Yeah. You've seen how, I, I believe MTV has a um, series on that where they are diagnosed with these rare diseases that you don't have that you learn from that and you're like, oh my goodness, that's scary. But you want to, you know, we want to kind of touch home here in Chicago right. because you don't, you know, these that are aired on, on you know MTV. They're like from Europe, from England, from oh, all over the yeah, world. Because like, it, yeah, the end, it gives the impression that it doesn't happen here. It happens somewhere yeah, else. But yeah, but it's no, we're it's all human. It's, yeah, we're all susceptible. To these right. Things. Yeah. And you know, we also want to do another one about um, quinceañeras. You've heard oh, of them, right? Oh, quinceañeras. Yes. Yeah, quinceañeras. You know how yes. they had the Sweet Sixteens yeah. where it was all lavish and you know oh, people yeah, with money. Yeah. No, mm. we want to do the real thing, the way you know it really is in our culture. Oh, okay. you know, like, yeah, okay. Um, the traditional quinceañeras, not, not, you know, like people that have money and, you well, know. no, this is why we have godfathers. <laughs> in, in, uh, yeah, in you Latin have sponsors America. pretty yeah, much. sponsors, yeah. You walk in there, it's like, yeah, you know what, we're going to throw this huge party, but we want you to give money. Give money. Yeah. And we need someone for the beer. We need someone for the wine. We need someone right. for the cake. We need someone right. for the dress, blah, blah, blah. And the list goes down at the end of the day. Yeah. What did, uh, what did mom and dad do? Exactly. Yeah, because, yeah, because not a lot of Latinos have a lot of money, you know. And but, but, Well, that's just our yeah. tradition, yeah, though. I mean, you mm -hmm. know, like, we do, that's just how we were brought up. It's our tradition. I mean, even when you get married, you do the same thing. You ask for sponsors, don't you? <laughs> no, this I mean, is true, yeah. I don't know if you have ever been married, uh, well, but... This, yeah, the Sonny Brightly's been married uh, three times and divorced 26 times. <laughs> yeah, and, see? but see, the Sonny Brightly, you know, his late great father, Sir Drake Brightly, he... He didn't need to. He didn't. He didn't need the sponsors. Oh, okay. Actually, he did. I'm lying to you. But we didn't go to family. He actually went to like the actual companies and get sponsorship. Yeah, Same. you should have seen the, the few weddings that I, uh, the, the three weddings that I was. Yeah. That I was in. You know, it was you know sponsored by Pepsi, Apple. You know, it was. Wow, yeah. he really went top of the line. He did. He did. And all we got was lousy T-shirts. Seriously, it was it was it was bad. Yeah. That's terrible. So, I, I got nothing but bad things to say about um, sponsorship weddings. Speaking of that, go you ahead. Know, I actually am working on one of my biggest goals right now. You know, I went back to working out because obviously when I was, you know, in the hospital, they told me I couldn't, you, does it I mess couldn't with work you? out. Yeah, but um, you can't do anything? Yeah, I okay. was so paranoid. So, so tell me. my doctor said, you know, you're okay to work out, go back to your normal routine. So I'm like, yay. So she didn't have to tell me twice because I had gone, you know, without telling her. Right. <laughs> Which, you know, I guess I put you my cheated? health at risk. <laughs> you cheated? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. But anyways, when she told That's me, okay. I was like, I would have done the same thing. <gasps> you know, mm -hmm. I was good. But anyways, mm -hmm. you know, I do want to, you know, get in shape eventually. And mm -hmm. um, what, one of my biggest goals, and I've always wanted to do this, and hopefully, at long term speaking, by the time I know what it in is. five years, I know what it is. Tell it's me. eating chocolate cake and not being guilty about it. Maybe that. A no. whole cake. No. And not feeling guilty. I want to become the first Latina to be on a fitness magazine um, and be sponsored by Under Armour. I want to, I want to white shot of this. So, yeah. So that's what I want to do. Really? But I want to, I want to, I, I really want to reach my goal. <laughs> I do. But, you know, it, and I can see that happening. I can see that but happening. But I, ha I have a ways to go. I mean, but I'm working on my goal you, and, you, you know, like and I I'm said, giving myself five years, like I said, which being is a long-term goal, a good thing. But, but it won't happen. Because don't you just hate it? Like when there's people out there that, you know, and especially in Latino culture, for some reason, you know, there's a lot of people that want to see you fail. There's no such thing as let's help you out. It's always why are you doing it? Yeah. Why are you doing it? And and the sad thing is that sometimes even our own families do that. Yes. Because it's like it's like I just I just see it as uh, if you keep me down, therefore it gives you an excuse not to do anything as well. And that's okay. sad. And I mean I, I mean the Sunny Brightly works out five times a week. You know for ninety minutes, no matter what happens, rain, sleep, snow, or shine. Okay. And every now and then, even amongst my, I mean, well, my family finally just gave up and said, yeah, let him do it. 
you know, because we have another health, not the Sir Jake, but I mean, uh, it, Sonny it's Bradley, important yeah, for your health. Yeah, Sonny Brightly has family too, and he has a brother who's even worse than I am. So what happens is, uh, you still get the coworkers, and and of course they're all Latino. They are the little coworkers who say, "Why you, you know, don't go. Let's go have a few beers, or let's don't go. Don't tomorrow. You you know you don't have to do this." It's like, well, you know, you know, Sonny. Last last time I checked, Sonny is not a, a skinny boy. Right, he a, but he you know a big what? Boy. There's gonna be always negative people, but you know, you just kind of have to, you know, like so, skip over those because sometimes, like my, myself, I, what I do to motivate people is, you know, on my Facebook page, I always post that I'm there um, because I know that there's my one friend or somebody who's maybe, you know, going through something that maybe she can't get to the gym or he can't work out or something, and I've actually gotten like inbox messages from my friends. And that, you know, are asking me, how, are, how do you do this? You know, I'm so happy for you. I wish I could do that. And they go through the whole story of why they can't work out. I'm like, you know what? You can do it. Mm -hmm. If you, you know what? Don't let nothing stop you. You know, the worst thing you can do is not try. Right. I mean, I mean, what's the alternative? You know, you sit down and do, you don't do anything. Right. And everybody else, okay, it's a double-edged sword. The parents come in and go, why aren't you doing something? You got to be doing something. Go to work. Do some, Do this. Do that. And then the moment you hit a certain level, oh, why do you, why, why, you don't have to do that. Why are you doing that? That's, yeah. that's too hard. It's and, too hard. <laughs> and you know what? Today marks 15 days exactly that I've been going 15 days in a row. I've been working out, which makes me feel so much better. And my best friend, I think you've met her, Diana. Oh, yeah. Um, nice, she's yeah, my nice biggest motivator. She's like pushing me and, you know, like every I know day. one of the main reasons you were motivated is because you were going to be on the Sunny Brightly show. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, like I actually had stopped working out for the last three months because my dad passed away. Well, yeah. Oh, and then, I'm sorry. Thank Condolences. You. And mm -hmm. then, you know, that came about with my health issue and... I was like, okay, when am I going to go back? So now that I was given the green light, I'm like, there's no stopping me now. So it is, Isn't it funny also that sometimes when I mean, bad things happen, they tend to happen one right after the other. Yeah, and I'm just like, this is not going to stop me from anything. And, you know, I'm here. It's like, I'm, I'm not, you know, I, a lot of people that know that I'm on blood thinners are like, wow, you're too young to be on blood thinners, but I'm not going to be on them forever. No, you know? yeah. Up, only until November. Yeah, but, and, and, but, and like I said, you're taking care of yourself, which is always a good thing, you know, because you have a, you, you mean, cause you have a lot of things to look forward to, you know, and you got your, your plate is full, and, oh, yeah. you know, I, I'm jealous. There's times I go to sleep at 2 in the morning, sometimes wake up early, and I work on the computer because I'm doing other things, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I also do social media for some of my friends that are in real estate, so I manage their social so media. So you do their social media, and do they at least say thank you? No, I get paid for that. Oh, yeah, okay, I good, do good. get paid for that. So. Good, good, good. Um, uh, I'm sorry, they ain't nothing. No. This life is free. No, no. and he, he's ask, actually you pay for it. You know what? He's actually asked me if I would be willing to work for him. Um, and you say? And I said, let me think about it because he, you hear that? Let me think about it. No, because he did. He did ask me. He said, would you be willing to work for me as my assistant? He's like, I would give you my commissions from you know the sales of my homes. And I said, hmm. Hmm. Let me see if I have time first. Hmm. And um, but he is a very nice guy. And he said the only reason I ask you is because I know how hard you work, and you know you're a good person, and you know you're a hard worker, and I, I love the way you, you work. And I right. said thank you. He said let me think about it. So you know that might be something I'll, I'll be doing in the near future. So but right now I'm managing his social media. Hey, I have a checklist here that says all the stuff you're doing. No, you're still missing five more items. <laughs> <laughs> I kid, I kid, I kid. No. Um, so yeah, so uh, uh, actually, I, I am missing one. Oh, item. oh yeah. Uh, um, do tell. Pray I, tell. I do actually. Last month, I did um, establish my production company, which is part of G three Productions. G three Productions. Um, which I'm going to be doing the um, the, you know, the reality the reality, the reality series, reality series. Reality under series. that. Yeah, and hopefully, you know, one day mm -hmm. I will be knocking on doors in Hollywood and see if. I'll get lucky and somebody will purchase my series and we'll see what happens. It, and, and don't get me wrong, it doesn't necessarily have to be Hollywood. It could be New York. It could be, exactly. it could be Chicago. You never know. It could be anybody. It could be Sunny Brightly. It, 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 could, be, it could be Sunny. <laughs> I, could, I could be producing a show. Or, you know, exactly. you, or you can be in Tug Buck too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, but being on, I mean, on the air is, is, is being on the air. So right. Everything, everything else after that, pfft, 
You know, the, the best exactly. feeling in the world is when, they're, when somebody's flipping through your channels and go, oh my God, it's such and such on TV. Oh, I can't believe it. Woo. Yes. And then they look at my show and they're like, oh, it's just, it's just sunny. I'm flip the yeah. and change the Skip channel. Skip it. Skip it. He's dirty. <laughs> I've been very, but actually, we've been very well behaved tonight, right? Yes, you've, good, been, good, you've good. been good. Oh, well, I know. Thank I you. I know. Yeah, they told me that I have to keep. You know, you have to keep the leash on, and I'm, I'm going because I figured. You know, like I said, after after 20 emails, I'm glad you finally had the courage to be on the show. Was it 20 or was it more like 40? No, it was not. It was 40. 40 and oh, oh, 40 and the promise with pizza. I'm very good at, <laughs> I'm very good at uh, getting back to you. No, no, I believe it. I'm, I'm just, I kid. Yeah. Uh, now, for example, in like, okay, so you have all these things going on and you have your production company, you have your radio show, you have the school knocking on your door, you have people knocking on the door when it comes to home buying and, and uh, land purchases. Okay, I'm trying to wrap my mind around this. And Where you forgot you, one thing. What did I forget? Um, the endorsement for Durr! Under Armour. No, oh, that's right. Under Armour. Okay. But that's... All that. Okay. But that's long term. No, no, no. Hey, you never but know. But it's on the list. Life is funny. One minute you could be like, oh, okay. And then, it will, it will then a year later you're like, look, Sonny. Knocking on my door. I'm like, what? Uh -huh. Look, I'm on the cover. I'm on the cover. <laughs> it happens. Uh, and I also have, you know, the Under Armour. I was like, Ew, I hate you. Yeah. Because I can never lose my tummy. Anyways, um, so what do you see yourself in like five years? I know you said, mentioned all these things. Am I missing something in the next five years besides being... You, you, do you have kids? I do. I have two beautiful girls that are sitting in the audience. Oh, um, yeah, yes. yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, okay, yeah. Oh, the, the, those. Oh, yes. I want two more. Okay. Anyways. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, mm -hmm. I, um, I think I. You know, one of my biggest motivators is Warren Buffett. I'm not sure if you're familiar I, with him. We, yeah, we know Warren Buffett. I, I love Warren Buffett and his beliefs and I've always thought of you know one of the things that one of his quotes is always you know never put all your eggs in one basket and the other one um, that I always learned from him is always uh, never rely on one source of income and yeah. you know as a single mom yeah, I, I never never that's one thing even even before I heard it from Warren Buffett I always believed in that myself so I, I, I've always been a person to explore different options okay what can I do next what can I do next to kind of bring more income, you know? And I just see myself growing and investing in other things, you know, and having you, various sources like, of income. Kind of like being an entrepreneur. Pretty much. And? And, and pretty, I mean, I don't see myself married. I don't think I would, um, <laughs> I don't oh. see myself married in five years. I don't oh. think so. I don't think a, a man would have the patience for a busy person like me. Yeah, you'd be surprised. There's a lot of crazy people out there. Crazy attracts crazy. Crazy, <laughs> crazy <laughs> no, attracts crazy. I don't think so. Yeah. I, I doubt it. But yeah, it's it's very difficult. If you're serious about something like that, then you go to Sunny Brightly Connection, and we find you a man. We find you a, a, your perfect partner in the next thirty the, seconds. The Sunny Brightly. No, um, Sunny. No, Brightly Connection. Sunny Brightly Connection. <laughs> okay. You know, you go there, and literally, I can make a phone call right now. We'll have him walking through this door. He oh, might need a green nice. card, though. He might oh, need no, a green no, card, I though. Need, I don't need that. We, we, we've done we've done something no. like that on the show before. We've called it in. No, and, thank you. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not saying that's. I'll that's, pass. No, I'm not, we're not saying that. I'm just saying that if it ever came to that, and one day I get a phone call in the middle of the night, Sunny, you know, you know, I, I need help. You know, I think I've reached that level of entrepreneurship that I think I need to share it with somebody. Then I'll be like, oh, don't worry, I'll make that phone call yeah. for you personally. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I but I will tell you exactly what I, what my um, but yeah, expectations yeah, are. Yeah, exactly, expectations, yeah, you know, yeah, 10 feet tall and, yeah. you know, I get you. But, yeah, um, not, not only just are there a lot of young filmmakers or young radio personality or young talent out there, um, not, they're Latino, as I, you know, we're a minority. So is there anything, anything, anything or any inspirational quotes, thoughts, you know, sentences you might want to, you know, give to our uh, to anyone listening right now, uh, like a pep talk, like like eh, in your own words over the next minute or so. One of the things that um, I've learned and I want to talk to, I mean, I, I do want to tell you is never burn your bridges in this industry, especially never ever burn your bridges because you just never know who you're going to be working with in the near future. And trust me on that because somebody burned their bridges with me, and guess what? I'm going to be working with them pretty soon. Ooh. That person's going to be working for me. Ooh. Ouch. How does that work? Ouch. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, I've, I've been there too. Very. I've been there myself. So, 
that person is going to make themselves look bad, awesome. but you know, awesome. it's like, that's, that's the number one advice that I give. Well, Alicia Fonseca, Alicia Fonseca, let me read for you. Yes. Alicia Fonseca. Alicia. Thank you very much Thank for you. being on our show. Yes. Okay. And uh, my God, what a grip. Anyways, uh, for more information, uh, Alicia Fonseca, please go to her website. It'll be down here on the, on the bottom here on the lower, on the lower third. Also, if you have any more, any questions, any suggestions on our show, uh, please go to facebook.com slash the Sunny Brightly Show, or you can go to our website, sunnybrightlyshow.com, and give us your thoughts, tell us how horrible we are, or how good we are, or how wonderful the, the host is. Anyways, um, with that said, I want to say thank you very much for watching, you have a good night, and just remember, there can only be one Sunny Brightly, but don't let that stop you from trying. Have a good one, bye-bye. Thank you for being on the show, awesome.